everyone welcome back to my channel today i have another exciting video for you because we are going to be talking all about my hindu dress the response to this dress over on my instagram was huge you guys clearly loved it as much as i do so i wanted to come on and give you a special monday sewing fix to talk all about this dress how i made it what i wore just to answer all of you guys questions As you will know if you follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the crafty pie if you don't already. Saturday was my hen do, which was so lovely. I went out for afternoon tea with my family and closest friends. It was such a lovely day and obviously I wanted to make a really special outfit for the occasion. Honestly, I was absolutely in love with this dress on the day. I would wear it every day if I could. And it is actually a pattern that I hacked to make my dream Hindu dress. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into it and I'm gonna tell you all about how I came up with this dress. So the first thing we will discuss is the fabric. And I do actually have some fabric left over from the dress. So I will show you this here. So I got the fabric from Minerva and it is a gorgeous brocade. So the background is white and then it has a really pale blue. This fabric was a bit spendy. I'm not gonna lie, it was 17.99 a meter. For me, that's a lot to spend on fabric because I like a three pound a meter eBay bargain. But I would hand on heart say that this fabric is 100% worth the money. For a special occasion, it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't think you can even really see properly on camera, but you can actually see the different layers of the brocade. So if I move that, you can see almost through the fabric to the fibres underneath, and it just creates a lovely puffy texture. As well, what I love about this fabric, and I didn't actually get to use this in the dress, but the opposite side, which is the same for all brocades, is the reverse. So you've got, instead of a white background, the blue, and then the flowers there, which could end up meaning that you could do a really lovely play with the different sides of the fabric to make a really interesting garment. Um, I didn't do that this time, but I did consider it. I ended up going for more of a simple approach, but that is the fabric that I used. I will link it below in the description box if you want to check it out on Minerva, but I would 100% recommend this. Oh, hey. <laughs> change of position so that I can talk you through the different elements of the dress before we look at how I made it. So for the pattern, I did use a Macau's, Macau's, Macau's. I never know how to say that, but we're going to go for Macau's. <laughs> I used Macau's 8032, which I will put a little picture of here so you can see. This is the perfect example of a pattern that I have tweaked, hacked, changed loads of bits to make it my perfect dream dress. So I chose the pattern, the 8032 pattern, because I just loved the really chic, almost vintage style silhouette to the dress, but I knew there was key things that I wanted to change. Main bodice piece is roughly the same. However, I had to make a few adjustments, obviously, because, you know, baby. I did end up going without the darts um here at the bust so we do have and i don't think you can see them that well but we do have bust darts across the sides but it should also have waist darts now i wanted to leave those out so that i could easily get it on and off and obviously it gave me a bit of leeway with bump otherwise i think those darts would have been really really pretty to add a bit more shape when it comes to sleeves the pattern does have a really nice sort of fluted sleeve with a frill on the end but i ended up going for a completely different sleeve i stole this from one of my favorite vicky sews patterns i think that that pattern has the perfect puff sleeve and i often add it to any other dress that i'm making and then i just elasticated the bottom of this sleeve so it was really nice and comfortable and it gave me a bit of a puff and then the main hack that I did was the back. Now I had the crazy idea, I actually dreamt about this one night, that I wanted the dress to have, let me just pull it down a bit so it looks better. Um, I wanted the dress to have a love heart back because obviously it was my Hindu, 
links to the theme and I just thought it would be really cute. So I ended up self-drafting this whole um, back bit here using the original back bodice pattern. I did make a twirl just to check that everything worked but I'm going to show you what I did to the, to the pattern piece so let me just grab it. Okay, so here is my Frankenstein pattern piece. This is the standard back pattern piece for the pattern. The only difference is that usually it would carry on down here and this bit would be filled in. I freehand drew the rough love heart that I wanted and then I made sure to then draw within that love heart um, at an equal distance, one centimetre around as well to add my seam allowance. And then I just cut that out and you can see that I left this bit here that ended up being the closure at the back. And this is the bit that ended up being the cutout. I did twirl this because I didn't know how it was going to work. But I'm really glad I did because the shape wasn't quite right when I did the twirl. So I ended up just sticking a random piece of paper onto the back just to bring that love heart in a bit because I was struggling to have enough room at the top. Big tip when you're hacking patterns, rather than just going for it, is to do a practice just to make sure that it all works. But I absolutely love how it turned out. I did do three hook and eye closures here just to keep it sitting nicely together. Last couple of things, I did add a waist tie. Um, I just find at the minute that with my bump, bringing things in at the waist is quite flattering. So I just did a quick waist tie. And then for the bottom of the dress, you'll have seen in photos, but the original pattern, I was going to add a frill onto the bottom. So I did actually have that all cut out, but I tried the dress on without, and I just didn't feel like it needed it. So in the end, I just went for a straight hem, straight skirt, and I just think the whole garment felt really well balanced and definitely gives me Cinderella slash Audrey Hepburn vibes and what could be better than that? Now over to voiceover brogan to talk you through my sewing process. This was the first day I was working on the dress after work and I started by cutting out my pieces from the fabric. Here I'm doing two front bodice pieces and then two pieces for each of the back bodices as well because I did want to line the full bodice. And then I moved on to doing the skirt. So just to make sure I had enough room to gather because of my bump, I just moved the skirt piece away from the edge, maybe three or four inches. And I also extended the length of the skirt as well because I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with that yet. Then I started by doing the darts. I did measure these out using the pattern piece and then I just marked them with pins, checking them against each other to make sure they're the same. I like to use my friction pen to draw on a rough line to follow as well. And then this just removes with heat afterwards. I never back stitch at the end of my darts because it can make a lumpy finish. I just cut the threads and then give them a little tie. And then I start by putting my two front bodice pieces together, pinning them at the neckline. You can see I've done all the darts there. And I also did the same with each of the back bodice pieces. So I was going to sew all the way around the neckline and then all the way around the love heart. And I'm using a one centimetre seam allowance all the way around. Carefully going around the corners because you don't want to stretch anything out. I like to make sure I'm taking my pins out as I go along. And then when I got to the edge, I just did a pivot turn there just to make sure I was going round and leaving a crisp corner. And then once I was done, I chopped off the corner edges and then to reduce the bulk, I just snipped into the seam allowance to make sure that I could get a nice even curve. Then I went to pressing. So I'm just pressing the neckline there. Really taking my time to press here because obviously you want it to look nice and even. So this is a really important step. And then this was the finished result. So you can see the love heart coming together. The darts are all nice and pressed. Then I decided to add in a little label that said party dress because I love adding in labels to my makes. And then I overlocked the side seams together once I was happy with the fit. And I moved on to the sleeves. So here I've already sewn the underarm seam of the sleeves and I've hemmed them. But I did want to gather in the puff with elastic. So I just marked quarters of the elastic and pinned it around the sleeve. And I had to stretch as I sewed. 
and then here I'm gathering the top of the puff sleeve as well so I'm just running some gathering stitches and here they are inserted I think they look so cute there's the little puff sleeve there with the elasticated cuff and a shot of the back as well I just pinned this to my mannequin at this point and next day I was working on it, I added on the skirt. I actually decided that I really liked the skirt as it is. I was planning on adding a ruffle, but in the end I just overlocked the edge and did a super narrow hem because I didn't want to lose any more of the length. And I just sewed that narrow hem down and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And then obviously I already had the ruffle ready, so I actually ended up using that to form my waist tie. I just folded it in half and sewed all the way along. You can see it's already hemmed on one side because I was planning on using it for the ruffle, but here I am just sewing the tube. And once I've done that, I just take some time to turn out the tube. And that was pretty much it. Dress complete, I'm gonna show you the finished result. questions about shoes, makeup, all sorts like that. So I wanted to just answer them all on here. I will start with the shoes because clearly you guys are in love with sparkly shoes as much as I am. These are the beauties that I wore with this dress. So they are a baby blue kitten heel shoe with a sling back. They have this bejeweled buckle on the front of them. And honestly, I felt like Cinderella <laughs> wearing these shoes. I don't know why. They just remind me of her glass slippers. So these were from a small Spanish boutique. So unfortunately, I can't link them or anything for you because um, they don't have a website. But I'm sure you could find something similar um, online. The next thing that caused a stir was the handbag again your girl loves handbags and who wouldn't want one that is pink and fluffy this bag has a pearl handle it's just like a magnetic little closure it does come with a strap but i tend to just wear it you know holding it and uh, this is really randomly from skinny dip so Skinny Dip may make phone cases and things like that, um, but I was randomly in Topshop one day, back when Topshop was a thing, and this was on sale. And I saw it on the way to the till and naturally had to buy it because it is me in a bag. These were the earrings that I wore. So again, they've got pearls. They're like a mini hoop with pearls and then these like blue enamel flowers. These earrings the eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted on the show they are from river island they were a complete impulse purchase i didn't really know why i was buying them i just liked them and since then i am so amazed by how many outfits these go with i wear them all the time even with this dress i think they'd look cute but i wanted to have them to hold for you so i didn't put them on today i will have a look if these are still online and link them below if they are but i might struggle because these were a few months ago now and a very last thing outfit wise for all my makeup lovers out there i do get a few questions about lip combos and particularly about the one that i was wearing with the dress so the first thing that i had on was mocha lipstick it's a satin lipstick by mac i do have the exact same lipstick on today it's kind of like a nudie brown with a bit of an orange undertone which i like and then over the top of it i paired this charlotte tilbury lip gloss that's really helpful because it doesn't have a sticker on it it's one of their is it like million dollar shine ones? Again, I'll link it below if I can find the name, but I love these lip glosses because they're not sticky at all and they give you that really glassy lip look. So yeah, if you want a good nude pair together, you need to get yourself these. 
So that is it guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you love my Hindu dress as much as I do. I felt like a princess wearing it all day and I already need to think of the next occasion that I can wear it to because I do not want this just sitting in my wardrobe. I really hope you enjoyed this little bonus video on a Monday. Let's face it, Mondays can be a bit boring, so why not talk about sewing together? My next video will be up on Friday as usual, so make sure you stay tuned for that and I will speak to you guys very soon. Bye!